Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a basic curved shadow effect in Photoshop, which is a quick and easy way to add some depth to your work. Let's get started. So here's our document, and all it is is a simple background with an image using an inner stroke layer style. Now it looks pretty flat, so we're going to add some shadows to make it stand out a little bit more. So the first thing that I want to do is click on my image and make sure I have show transform controls checked. And we're going to find out how wide this image is. So I'm going to click on one of these little handles. And up at the top you'll see next to W for width that it's 1280 pixels. If yours isn't showing in pixels, all you have to do is right click in that little box and choose pixels. So now that we know how wide it is, I'm just going to hit enter a couple times to exit free transform mode. Next I'm going to come down and choose my rectangle tool. And using the color black, I want to make sure that I have shape selected up here and click on my document. And then I'm going to make it the same width as my image, so 1280 and I'm going to make it 200 pixels tall. I'm going to press V to select the move tool and I'm going to snap that into place right on top of the bottom of my image. Next I'm going to drag a rule out to the center line of my image so I know where the center is. If your rulers aren't showing, just press Ctrl R to hide or show them. Next I'm going to nudge my black rectangle down 15 pixels or so. So holding shift, I'm going to press the down arrow to move it 10 pixels, and then just press the down arrow 5 more times to move it 5 more pixels. Then I'm going to move that rectangle beneath my photograph in the layers palette. I'm going to come over here to my pen tool and click and hold on it, and then select add anchor point tool. So if I zoom in here and highlight over the edge of my rectangle, you'll see that my tool allows me to click and add a point to my rectangle. Next I'll come over and choose the Direct Selection tool and click on that anchor point that I just added and while holding Shift I'm going to drag it up about halfway between the original position and the bottom of my photograph. That's going to give us a nice curved edge down here. Then I'm going to select these two right points here and holding Shift nudge them 10 pixels to the left and do the same thing on the left except nudge them 10 pixels to the right. After all that's done, I'm going to zoom out and press Control semicolon to hide my guide. Then I'm going to right click my rectangle and convert it to a smart object. Next, I'm going to come up and choose Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to give it a radius of about 5 pixels and hit OK. Next, I'm going to change the blend mode for that to Linear Burn and the Fill Opacity to 50%. We're changing the fill opacity instead of the regular opacity because when you use the linear burn blend mode, the fill opacity has a slightly different look. Now, this is a very subtle effect, but it can add a lot of depth to an otherwise flat image. Since our shadow is a smart object, you can always double click the Gaussian blur under smart filters and change the settings. You can also duplicate the shadow layer and scale it up or down to use beneath other photo layers. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.